I was a student in the 90s. Uh, I was studying in Madrid and I also spent one year in London at the Bartlett School of Architecture and it was, it was very much an inspiration for all of us. There was a lot of um, speculation about new technologies and about kind of future look of the city and architecture, but actually he was the one who was building that. So it was, it was very much uh, our reference. I think he introduced uh, a concept about sustainability, more related to, yeah, to the new ways of doing, the new technologies, and also looking into different fields uh, outside of the architecture field to find solutions to make this architecture possible. He was kind of uh, the visionary who has, by the time that I was a student, he had already built this kind of futuristic kind of uh, building. So it was, uh, he was very much um, yeah, a master in, in that time. I very much like to think that uh, yes, yeah, solutions are to be found at the uh, urban scale, and you know, and I'm talking about the kind of the real the huge challenges that the world is facing regarding waste, regarding water, regarding um, any kind of resources. So I like this idea of working with cities, and I, I really believe that the architects and the urban designers can actually create the framework for cities to be much more efficient. So I like this idea of working with cities and coming up with uh, new innovative solutions for them. I'm not saying that we just have to address reality with, uh, with the existing tools. We have to kind of come up with new tools to address reality. And, but the, the combination between these, the you know, uh, speculation and reality, I think that's the most interesting combination more than just being on a speculative level or just in reality. So how can we combine these two worlds to address uh, urban issues? How can we um, designers and architects become more efficient uh, as a small practices? Like sometimes also small, uh, practitioners struggle because it's very difficult to, you know, to compete in the world. But I think also we have the tools today to share knowledge and to share um, resources and to, to be able to cooperate that these tools were not uh, in place 20 years ago. So how can we work as a network in order to address these challenges? I think architecture has been running behind a little bit and uh, compared to other industries, I believe the architects do have the capability to come up with solutions and design is an amazing discipline that can kind of, you know, address any kind of topic or any kind of problem in a very kind of creative way. However, unless we create these bonds and links with the industry, we cannot address these problems ourselves. So we really need to create these partnerships with the industry to come up with solutions that can address these larger problems at um, building scale and city scale. Regarding mobility, I have this, um, you know, this problem that uh, I feel that is, I mean, it's not that I feel, it's like the, it's the high companies are dominating the question and they're, you know, there's all this kind of um, a new wave of driverless cars and how they're going to be impacting cities and the street and the street section and, and so and so on. And it feels that it's not the designers leading the conversation, it's not the architects or the urban designers, it's more the high technology companies who are kind of deciding how we're going to be living in these cities. So I think we designers need to kind of engage into that conversation and try to lead it together with the cities. Uh, because it's going to have a, an amazing impact and not only in terms of public space but also in terms of uh, resources again you know so I think we need to engage that conversation and and, and leave it and, and try to to come up with solutions before the companies decide uh, about it. I think education is the base for everything unless we get everybody on board uh, in order to yeah, again to have a more sustainable living at every possible scale and we cannot change the world so i like this idea of kind of uh, not only coming up with solutions but actually trying to train and trying to to create this kind of network of knowledge and sharing resources and education is a resource to make people more proactive in order to to, to change the world in a positive way. I think it's all about education and raising awareness. So I don't think we can aim for any kind of sustainability at any scale without engaging the general public. So the sustainability is not something that relates to the professionals uh, involved into it. It, it's relate, it relates to everybody. Our everyday life is uh, impacting the planet in many different ways. And unless we get um, kind of aware and conscious and proactive about it, there will not be kind of major changes. But also at the same time, I mean, that is kind of at society level, but uh, at the same time, urban planners and urban designers are making decisions that are going to be affecting people's lives. So it's something that um, 
that reinforces this idea that education is super important. If like problems are not problems, are challenges and opportunities to learn. So, you know, sometimes we get overwhelmed about reality because reality is, uh, it could be frustrating. So I would say that, um, that we have to keep the energy. We have, you know, this creative energy that we develop in our kind of uh, school years, we have to bring that energy into reality and, and getting inspired by good actors such as Norman Foster and many others, and it is possible to change reality. It's about creativity and, 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 and energy. <laughs>